Hey everyone, my name is Helen. Welcome to the Shrimpy McGee channel. Today I thought I would make a video where we pit more expensive and less expensive products against each other. And I just want to show you guys my best budget picks. You do not have to spend a lot of money on any of this stuff. I think the most expensive thing that I'm recommending here is maybe $20. So you can spend a little and get a lot in terms of making your hair look fuller, thicker, better. And make sure that you stick around to the end because I'm going to be pitting two really famous products against each other and you're gonna see which one performs better and which one I'm picking and why. The answer is gonna surprise you, so hang around for that. So without any further ado, let's have a seat together and get right into them. Hey everybody, okay, well it's been a minute since we've shot in this position, huh? I've been moving around, I moved a desk into my bedroom so I have a little home office and I haven't filmed here in a little while but it's nice to be back in my usual setting next to the window. Uh, okay, so I promise you my favorite budget picks. My, one of my favorites is honestly just an inexpensive comb. This does so much, and for those of you thinking you need to buy some sort of special comb or anything at all that's expensive, you absolutely do not. If you have thinning hair and a lot of hair loss, you probably don't need a really big paddle brush, that, and those tend to be more expensive. I don't, have a, I don't have a lot of hair right now. I can completely get by with this comb. I really don't see a difference between when I use this and a big paddle brush. Uh, my other favorite is a Tangle Teaser. You've heard me talk about that before on this channel, but you just need a comb. Like a comb does so much. It's so versatile. It helps me bust up my part in a nice spot. It helps me when I'm actually styling with any kind of heat tools. And I can actually brush my hair with this. Now, a reminder when you're brushing your hair, don't start tugging really hard from the top. Always just go from the bottom. And for me, I like to go from even from underneath so I don't tug at any hairs and break them and give myself more split ends. But honestly, two dollars okay i bought two of these for five dollars at target but you can get them much less you know at a much better price than that even this is an mvp for thinning hair and hair loss two dollar comb now before i go any further i just want to say if you're enjoying this if you like my content if you have thinning hair hair loss if you're thinking about using rogaine if you have been using rogaine please go ahead and give this a like if you don't mind and consider subscribing to my channel because I make lots of this kind of content and when you subscribe and you like, it shows me that you want more of it. So please go ahead and do that. It would mean so much to me. My next way and my next suggestion for saving money is really considering switching from brand name Rogaine. And so you'll know now that this is absolutely not an ad and not sponsored. None of my content that I've made so far has been sponsored by Rogaine at all. Uh, but I would say go ahead and switch if you're really looking to save some cash, switch from Rogaine, and I use the men's foam, to generic Minoxidil, and I use the $20 stuff from Target. The three cans of this in the United States, last time I checked, was at Target. Of the brand name stuff, it's about 50 bucks. And if you switch over to the liquid stuff it's 20 bucks for the same amount of months i believe both are six month supply um i'm gonna put them in my hair you can have a look i really don't find there to be really any difference between how they look for me i'm lucky i guess my scalp is pretty dry the liquid is kind of oily the generic stuff is kind of oily and it sinks in pretty good pretty fast for me and um i've got the foam i'll put that on the other side and you know i don't see any difference Definitely one is a little more like oily and liquidy, but they tend to absorb pretty quickly. My hair's pretty dry. If you're on a budget, I would say this is the way to go. Um, but if you don't want to take my advice, that's totally fine. Check with your healthcare professional what, professional what they think about from you switching from a brand name to a generic. Uh, if you don't want to take it from me, it's up to you. Conditioner, shampoos. I think a lot of people, will, you know, are kind of hoping that I'll tell you that this expensive shampoo and conditioner will totally save your hair and it'll look so much better, thicker, fuller. There is kind of no real magic solution in my experience. Thickening shampoos do work to an extent, but I find them for my scalp kind of drying. And as far as conditioners, I mean, I do have a favorite shampoo and that's an expensive one, so I'm not gonna speak about that, but I am gonna speak about a conditioner that I really like, which is this L'Oreal Ever Pure Conditioner. I have expensive Kerastase conditioner that I bought in a set. Um, I don't think I would buy it again. I'm not sure that it's doing more than this beautiful smelling Ever Pure stuff does. This stuff is $8, which I uh, think is a really reasonable price for what it is. It smells delicious and really it smells high end. And L'Oreal also makes Kerastase, so really it's the same company making both, so 
Mm, I'll leave that up to you. I'll just leave it here, but I will say that I definitely love this conditioner. It smells great. It's $8 and it says that it's weightless on it. And I think that if you're struggling with thin hair and hair loss, you want to definitely get a conditioner that's not going to be too heavy because that'll just weigh down your hair and make it look and feel not great. My next suggestion is about hair tools here. And so let's just take a minute to talk about heat styling. A lot of people will tell you, do not use any heat styling if you're dealing with thin hair and hair loss. And I just say, I am going to say something contrary to that, which is that you really need to like the way that your hair looks. Is it gonna damage it? Maybe, everybody's hair is a little bit different. That's a really generic piece of advice, like don't use hair styling tools ever. That's a generic piece of advice to give to absolutely everybody. Everybody's hair is a little bit different. Some can take a bit of hair, heat styling, some cannot. Mine can definitely take on quite a bit without getting damaged and I've been straightening now for years and honestly I don't feel like I've got any more split ends than the time prior to that when I wasn't using heat styling at all. It's very much about how much you're doing. I use serums and things like that to protect my hair and so we'll talk about that in a hot second but yeah, I just go ahead and I use it. Now we're gonna talk about the actual heat, heat styling tools themselves. I have this really expensive Babyless or Babyless, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, flat iron, and it's maybe a hundred dollars, maybe it's upwards of 60 bucks, let's just say. What's great about this is it has a it's a professional level, you know, tool. It has a really long cord, it has a nice on-off button, and it's got like a dial where you can pick the heat. Like this is a premium product, it works really nicely, but do you have to have this on if you're on a budget? Absolutely not. For years before this, when I had much shorter hair and um, much less hair at some points, I used this tiny flat iron that I got for like $20 at like our version of um, like a beauty supply store, but I've seen this sold at like Marshalls slash TJ Maxx for like around the same price, maybe even 15 bucks. It is not expensive and it works great too, so you do not, unless you're a professional, need to spend a whole bunch of money on heat tools and flat irons and stuff like that. Uh, I got the more expensive one because I had this like big um, eBay and I don't really shop on eBay much. I had a big eBay gift certificate. So I decided to buy something that I think was gonna last me a long time. But if it were my own money, I would probably just buy a much less expensive one. I have done in the past, this $20 one works great. Don't hesitate to try that one out. So my next pick for budget stuff is this Trader Joe's hair serum. I picked this up last time I was at a Trader Joe's. Does it work as well as sort of like the super expensive like um, Bumble and Bumble's hairdressing oil? It's not nearly as nice a product. Like I don't wanna, <laughs> I don't wanna say they're exactly the same. Like there is a place for luxury products. For me, the number one place that there is for them is the fragrance. High-end products usually smell really, really nice. They smell like perfume because they're using higher-end fragrances and stuff like that, and sometimes not. Kind of just depends. I'm really enjoying this Trader Joe's serum. It is like a few dollars. I think it was like maybe four dollars. I'm finding it quite nice. Uh, I also have this extremely high-end Kerastase heat styling product that you put in to protect your hair from heat styling damage, and it's lovely too. It smells delicious. Whenever I put this in my hair, my husband always comments that my hair smells really nice. So what I'm definitely paying for with this expensive stuff is a beautiful fragrance. The Trader Joe's one is not gonna knock anybody's socks off, but it does the job. It does the job. I use it to uh, before I do any flat ironing or heat styling, as you should. So if you have thinning hair and hair loss, you should protect the hair that you do have. When you do put the stuff in, remember, the key for serums and these kind of products is not just to gloss it over your hair, it's to actually spend some time swishing it in. Just pressing it in. That's what I do and that's my secret to making sure it penetrates a bit more. Oh, and also don't start here. Start sort of more in the back and then work your way forward or else you get these weird glops like where you squashed it in like you'll see a shiny spot of serum. So that is my other tip for that. All right, so those are my best budget stuff. I think as I've described everything here, that curling iron was $20, the um, generic minoxidil is also $20. Like, I think you can do a pretty good job of getting a, so a whole sort of kit on the go for around $50 on a budget if you're starting with nothing, like not even a comb. But speaking of just favorite items, let's, let's move and let's have a look. Let's put two really famous products head to head and um, let's look at how they compare and what I think about 
whether you should include these into your routine, whether they're worth buying and all that stuff. So let's uh, let's move over to that. So the two products we're gonna be putting up head to head, and these are super famous. If you've seen people try to hide sort of balding spots, and thinning hair and stuff like that. Uh, the most famous one, and that's why I have my hair up so we can do a little demonstration here. They are Topic, and I used dark brown. It's called Topic Hair Building Fibers. This is a really super duper famous product. This is the market leader when it comes to hair fibers, and this L'Oreal Root Magic Cover Up is the market leader when it comes to sprays. This actually is originally intended to cover up white hair or graying hair or roots, right? That's why it's called Magic Root Cover Up. It's for like, if you have white, white hair and it's growing in. Luckily, I haven't gone too white yet, although this pandemic might make me have a full head of white hair by the end of this. <laughs> I've had these two for a while now. I don't use them all the time. I'm inside a lot, so it's not like anybody's looking at my bald spots. But let's put them head to head and let's first talk about price. This one is about, retails for about $10, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less if you can find it on sale. This is much more. This is sometimes around $30, sometimes around $25. Sort of depends on where you're shopping and where you're looking, but this is easily three times the price of this. If you're on a really strict budget and you're just not sure if you're gonna be maybe buying um, a topper or even going with a wig or you're just not too sure and you don't wanna invest a lot of money, I would say definitely go for this. But here's the thing. Yes, this costs three times more, but there's so much, so many fibers in it. Even though it says it's 12 grams inside of there, it lasts so long. Whereas this is much more like a hairspray and it runs out much more quickly. I've had this for ages. These I go through quite quickly. So it's sort of like, you know, there's economies of scale. Um, sometimes this can be a false economy and you're not really saving any money by buying it. And it also comes down to what you like as well. But let's put them head to head and um, you can tell me what you guys think. Okay, typically I would use a tissue to cover, but I don't have one handy, so I'll just use this <laughs> scrap piece of paper. Um, let's have a look here. So you'll see, I mean, the good thing is my hair is really dark. So hopefully it'll show. They both do really just a wonderful job. Okay, so you'll see that covered up the scalp pretty well. And that didn't take very long at all. And I'm gonna show you this now. I love these products equally, so I don't really, I can't really say one versus the other. It's just more a matter of um, how you wanna spend your money, right? If you really just don't have a lot to spend, buy this, you'll, you're gonna like it, I'm pretty sure. Um, and it also does the bonus work of hiding your grays. So that was just a few seconds of spraying, and I'll come in close too. Right, let me let my hair down now. That's why I pinned it up all kind of all kind of weird with some bobby pins to show you guys. So that's the filled in spot there. That's the filled in spot with fibers. And that's just like my scalp. That's what it would look like, not sprayed in. So you can kind of have a look there and see. Right, they both do an amazing job. I really don't have a fave between them. I don't think one is a rip off or anything like that. It's just all about what your budget is and what you can what you can afford. There you go, I've just downloaded pretty much all my budget information for like the best hair products. If you have any questions or comments or faves that I'm not mentioning, I would love to hear from you. So go ahead, pop down below in the um, comments and drop me a note. I always love to hear from everybody and know what you're thinking and get your points of view on all this kind of stuff. Also, if you enjoyed this video, I'm going to suggest that maybe there's two other ones you might wanna watch from me, which is hair fibers versus spray. I made a video about what the difference is between them, when to use one versus the other. And I made another video about natural remedies, which is not something I covered at all today, and what I think about them. So I've got those two other videos. Go ahead and check those out. I have a whole playlist full of like Rogaine stuff, hair loss, hopefully all the stuff you could need to get you through what is probably a really tough time but you know i wish you all the best in your hair loss and hair thinning journey and i'm wishing you all a really full head of hair in the near future so i'm hoping that happens for you thanks so much for watching my videos and spending this time with me i appreciate it so so much and we'll see you soon